learn that we really need to keep uh, pigeons away from you. Um, apparently, you've been known to have uh, some some animals burst into, I guess, not so much burst into flames, but where apparently their heads popped off. And I thought as soon as twice, t- twice. So there, there is a trend, and I thought that was awesome because when I heard about that, that was through. Um, uh, I think the podcast she did with Mona where that popped up and she's like mm. gravitate on that, use that for the, you know, for Instagram and the marketing, because that's something yeah. that people are interested in. And I thought, holy crap, I got to find a way to work. That. I need to talk to you about that because like, <laughs> how, I, I don't know anybody else that can just, I don't walk through a nice park. It's a beautiful sunny day. You're feeding some birds and their heads are just popping off. Like how, how does that even happen? <laughs> So the first time it happened, I was 17. So this is like in the year 2000. I was driving with um, with a friend of mine and in my neighborhood in Arlington, Virginia. Like, and we're going down this hill. All of a sudden, and and to set the scene as well, when you I was in high school, <laughs> yeah, my my car. Keep in mind, this is 2000, and I got my driver's license in 1999, and my car was a 1978 Toyota Corolla, like hatchback. Nice. And yeah, my, my dad had driven that thing across country. Like they bought it new, but in 1978. So the car was yeah. 21 years old when I was 16. And um, it was like when I was a kid, we, my dad let me, like me and my brother and sisters painted, like, and <laughs> put all these decals on it. So, and, and then I was like, I was like, I am not, I knew that was going to be my car. It was like, like the frame was held together by rust. Like you could turn the <laughs> car and the back doors would just fly open when you're going around the corner. You could take the key out of the ignition and the car would still be running. So, like, That's great. It was, it was amazing. And um, life of its so, own. <laughs> yeah. So before I before I got it, I was like, I am not driving this thing. It's black. My brother had put like a flaming tiger's head on a decal on the on the hood. It's like I am not driving this. This is humiliating. It was like Uncle Buck's car or something. So I was like, I forget like, cigarette packages. Eh? That that's one giant warning label right there. Yeah. So I was like, so so like we're we're getting this thing painted. So my dad, we paid like a hundred bucks at Earl Scheib, which exceeded the value of the car. And and we got it painted magenta. So it was this magenta oh, car. And the wheels, it didn't have hubcaps or anything. The wheels, we left this gold spray paint on that I had done when I was like nine years old. And and but they didn't, they were like, we can't peel the the decals off because it will just take the original paint off. So <laughs> So it was just painted over these decals so you could see the outlines of all the decals. <laughs> and I got like furry, like zebra print seats and everything for the inside. It was the most ridiculous car. Yeah, everyone around knew it. Like it was, it was and, um, so like I'm just making the I'm making the best of it. This is my car. <laughs> so we're driving in that, me and my friend. And um all of a sudden we're coming down this little hill and this pigeon just flies into the windshield and its head just po- comes off and this body <laughs> is laying on the hood of the magenta car with its wings outstretched and it's just, and i'm like and i'm like swerving all over the road my friend caitlin is just <laughs> screaming her head off in the passenger seat and i'm like i'm like flicking on the windshield wipers because you're like you don't know what to do finally the thing comes off we have to like pull the car over so Jeez. my youngest sister was eight at the time and so i was telling this story and it disturbed her so much that like for years and i'll still do it she's 30 now and i'll still do it to her where i'll tell like start telling the story but like disguise the beginning so all of a sudden the pigeon comes up with its head popping off and it's like the punchline <laughs> <laughs> and, she'll just like, ah, no. and my my other sister wendy I, this is first. She went to Wash U for art school, and for some sort of project there, she had to make like a cartoon of um, <laughs> like a several frame cartoon. So she illustrated that. So somewhere there is like a four frame, like comic book type of recreation of this. Oh, incident. that's great! It's pretty amazing. And then so was the like second, a, like a little quick flip book or something, or no? It's just four. It's just like a single frame. I gotta find okay. it it's somewhere at my parents' house. Please um, do. Yeah, it was That's... pretty fantastic. The story has become <laughs> like a life of its own. And then the crazy thing was, I was walking through my neighborhood. This is, must have been in like 2017, 
And I hear this like fluttering overhead and there's all these pigeons on like the telephone wires and everything. And then all of a sudden there's like this spastic, like flapping of wings, a sound, and then a thud and then blood everywhere. And this stupid pigeon had flown at like top speed directly into a telephone wire, cut its own head off. The head's over there. The body's over there. There's all this blood on the street. Like, and then there's no one around. It's just me. (laughs) so twice (laughs) that's incredible (laughs) every 17 years like that's right yep so that's the pigeon story (laughs) 